everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Jacqueline. I am your meditation coach and your guide today through this video. So I decided to do this video because this is something that is very, very close to me, um, something that I have experienced myself. Um, and I wanted to do a heal with me session when it comes to ED. Now for YouTube purposes, we cannot say the actual word, um, but hopefully you guys understood it in the title and know why we're here. Now, just a quick disclaimer, I am not a doctor, I'm not a professional when it comes to this. I am, however, a group facilitator for people who suffer with addiction. Um, I also, like I said, I'm a meditation coach and I personally have a ton of experience when it comes to ED. So, just making a disclaimer here, this is for entertainment purposes only. All right, so I wanted to do this video today because I thought hopefully that many of you would actually benefit from it. Um, I thought I would just start with maybe telling you a little bit of my history. So hopefully this will help you understand how I developed an ED and how I eventually healed myself from ED. So my symptoms really started at a very young age. I believe the earliest that I could remember when I wanted to start to diet or lose weight was when I was around the age of 10. Um, like many around that age, you kind of gain a little bit of puppy fat. <laughs> I was a little chubby and I became quite aware of it and I started to become really uncomfortable in my own body around that time. And so I would ask my mom to basically help me like make soups at night. And I just understood that like certain foods put on some weight and other foods didn't. My ED really started to become more noticeable probably around the age of 12 when I attempted to make myself put in the blanks there. How, how can you put it? Uh, release the food from my stomach. <laughs> Um, it started around the age of 12 and then it developed to a full ED. Um, I had Anna and I had, yeah, uh, f from the ages I'd say of 14, 15 up until I was 25. So this was a serious problem that developed to, that became something that basically ruled my life for most of my life and of course it caused all sorts of mental issues, health issues, emotional issues and spiritual issues and um, it became something that I understood over time that was a serious problem and that it was eventually going to affect my health, my relationships and my lifestyle. So I decided to at some point embark on the healing journey. Now, I did not seek professional help. Um, I did get, however, some professional help. I did see therapists for other reasons, which I'll go into in a minute. And I found that for some reason with me, what really helped me was uh, kinesiology. I'm not sure if many of you are familiar with it. It's basically um, a way of communicating with your body and your body kind of lets you know uh, what is wrong. I will put maybe something here about kinesiology or in the description box for you guys so you can kind of look it up. But what that basically told me is that there was a way for me to communicate with my body um, and it really came down to obviously putting the connection between emotional traumas and my ED. So a little bit about my history so you, uh, you can understand where I believe my ED developed from. So I am, I suffered from SA uh, when I was very little. Um, the first time it happened, I was six years old and then it continued from the ages of 10 to 13. And one of the things that I think I realized at that point is that I did not feel safe in my body. Um, so there was a level of disassociation with my body. Um, it is said that ED is a form of controlling your body because you can't control your outside environment, but the one thing that you can control is your body. So I believe that that was one of the um, reasons as to why I developed ED. On top of that, um, I think I remember also seeing my mother not having a good relationship with herself, like many women. Um, and she did not have a lot of self-esteem when, when it came to her self-image. Um, she just would look at herself in the mirror and just kind of like, Bleh you know, uh, look at herself with disgust at times. She was not happy with her breasts. She was not happy with 
with the with her body changing and so obviously as a child we absorb we learn from what we see not what we not not from what we're told and I really absorbed that from my mom also being uh, a very sensitive um, sensitive child and very sensitive to energies and my environment um, eventually I ended up in a uh, relationship when I was 13, a very defining relationship in my life with this person who was incredibly violent and abusive. And this person would actually use my eating. He connected that I had an ED and he would use that against me. So I would eat and he would uh, call me fat. And then when I didn't eat, he would call me an anorexic dog. And there was a lot of psychological um, torturing. <laughs> and physical abuse in this relationship. So obviously that did not help the situation. The issue became really prominent, I think, when I was obviously, you know, continuing to not eating and then obviously releasing the food, I developed anorexia. And of course, as you know, your weight fluctuates massively. And I started to have anemia, I started to faint. I smelled, of course, um, hair started to grow around my body. It was just a mess, okay? So there was a long period of suffering. And anybody who knows who has an ED, your life revolves around it. You wake up in the morning, that's the first thing you think about. You're thinking about how to count the calories, if you're into counting calories, how you're going to get through the day without eating. Um, if you have to go out to dinner, it's traumatic because obviously you have to pretend that everything is fine. And then, of course, you know what you're going to be doing after you finish eating. You try to prove to everybody that everything's fine by eating. And then, of course, you leave for a few hours to go to the bathroom and um, do what you want to do. You know, I, I realized at some point when I was um, in the thick of it, where I started to realize that I was spending most of my life staring at the toilet. Um, that was where I spent a lot of my time. So every time I ate, I would go to the bathroom and I would just release the food and that's what I was staring at. That's where I would spend my time. Not, of course, including the fact that you feel sick, that you're, you don't, you, 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 um, don't develop a relationship with your stomach anymore. So you don't know when you're full. You don't know when you're hungry. You're probably hungry all the time to tell you the truth. Um, so it just becomes this cycle, this vicious cycle, this way of being, and it becomes addictive. This is very interesting that people don't realize about uh, ED is that it becomes an addictive habit because kind of like self-harming or like a drug addiction, I think. It's very similar in the sense of you get a sure feeling. So everything outside of you is not sure, it's not secure, it's not safe, it's chaos. Um, but you are sure that when you release the food or when you don't eat and you manage to get through that one night where you don't eat your food, you feel good. And I remember for me the the releasing was also releasing of the toxicity that was around me, the relationships that were harming me in my life. And it, it was kind of like a drug, you know, I would, I would release the food and I would kind of get this high from it. Um, but like anything, of course, it got out of control. And then I also developed a, <laughs> I know it sounds like it's a lot, but this is the game when it comes to ED. And those of you out there who have it know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, I developed a gym addiction. Of course, I would go to the gym every day for three and a half hours. I would take one day off. And of course, I would feel horrible about that one day that I would not go to the gym. Anyway, I don't want to make this video about my story too much, but I just wanted to give you the context of what it was like for me because I know a lot of you out there can relate and totally understand what this is like, but ultimately it's just living in constant pain, constant mental torture, and of course, constant emotional torture. So today I wanted to really help you guys with a little bit of healing and meditation to help you hopefully connect the dots uh, because really I started the healing journey when I started to connect the dots, when I started to understand myself, understand my addiction, understand my behaviors, my habits, the motives behind it. We do things very subconsciously. So, um, uh, our brain works in such a way that it's designed to basically help us function and function whichever way it can. 
Now, if you had experienced traumas, which of course, if you have an ED, I guarantee that you've experienced some kind of trauma and it may not be an obvious trauma for some of you, um, but uh, many of you, it might be an obvious trauma. I don't know what that trauma is. This is something that you have to figure out for yourself and it may be multiple traumas. We develop coping mechanisms. We develop um, tools to basically get through the day, push through the day, um, a way of releasing the emotions, the, the turmoil, the pain, the suffering that we're going through. And so we develop these coping mechanisms that obviously have a, have a purpose, you know, and this is the part that we really struggle to understand is that even though it is a bad thing, it is designed to really help us in some level. Um, so really, that's one thing that I want you guys to start thinking about is like connecting the dots here and trying to understand yourself as best as you can. And we will hopefully go through that with the meditation. But one of the things that also helped me a lot was that I understood that there was no future for me in this. When I thought about myself uh, as a mother with children and knowing how addicted I was to this behavior, I could see myself cooking dinner, making dinner for the family and then saying, okay, mommy's gonna go now to the bathroom, I'll be back. And that thought really disturbed me, even though I don't want children. <laughs> I don't have children, but it was the understanding of being that role model, that um, adult self that was still in this stuck, you know, still stuck in the past and still being controlled by by controlled by this um thing that lives inside me so i started to do the small things number one i started being honest with myself of course like any addiction you have to admit the fact that you have a problem um there is a long period of denying it of lying it of lying about it and it's usually because we're not just lying to ourselves but we have to lie to everybody else around us so the easiest way to do that is to convince yourself if I convince myself that I don't have a problem, then I can convince everybody else that I don't have a problem. So really brutal honesty here and just being real with yourself. Um, number two, you gotta assess your environment. Are you in a safe enough environment where you can tell people about it? Unfortunately for me, that was not the case. Now, uh, my family didn't have the emotional tools to cope with it. So I wasn't able to go to them uh, because it was the very old school mentalities like just get over it. <laughs> they just didn't understand the complexity and uh, behind it. My relationship, uh, especially when I was younger, I could, I mean, my partner knew about it, but that person used it against me. Okay. So one of the things that I, for me personally, was number one, educating myself as best as I could. The wonderful thing about the internet and healers and meditations like this one. Um, just doing everything I could to get as much information to help myself to recover. Second of all, for me, was just seeking other tools. Now, I did therapy, but for me, therapy didn't work. And this is one thing that I find really frustrating is because people think, oh, I tried therapy, so that's it. There are a million other types of healing and, and therapies out there. You know, like I said, there's kinesiology, there's uh, a spiritual healer, if that's what you're into. Um, I'm sure there's like uh, help groups out there, but a lot of the time we think about these things, but we don't take action or we don't take time to research it. One thing I want you guys to really understand is that if you have ED, you are a very powerful person. And a lot of the times we're very afraid of our own power. I want you really to think about this. The dedication, the mental strength, the physical strength and the emotional strength that it takes to starve yourself, to be so controlled, takes so much power. And the issue with us is that we use it for the wrong reasons. We use that power, that energy, in a sense to keep ourselves safe, keep ourselves in the known, as opposed to trying something new. Because the minute we have to change, and for anyone with ED, we do not like change. <laughs> That is our worst nightmare. So at some point, you have to really ask yourself, do I really want to change this? Because if I genuinely want to change this, then of course you're willing to try things. Now, one, one thing at the time, you don't have to jump down the deep end. And like anything with ED, you are extreme, most likely. So you want to do baby steps. You want to tip your toe into something. Now, if you want to jump into something and you know it's going to work for you, go for it. Um, 
but for me it was trial and error for a long time and eventually once I kept on the healing, kept on the consistency of the practices, the meditation, the journaling, the kinesiology, the therapy, whatever it was that I could get access to, um, eventually I figured it out. Um, like anything, it's not going to happen overnight. Another thing that people with ED don't like to listen up to is the fact that it's going to take time, right? We want immediate results. Um, it's terrifying the idea of your body changing, of your body putting on weight or your body just changing. <laughs> okay, we want it to change a certain way. We don't want it to change any other way. So once again, it's this control thing. Um, so one of the things that I have to um, say that really helped me at the beginning is that once I started understanding the mechanics behind it, I realized what I had to kind of try and attempt with. And one of them was, how can I learn to appreciate myself just as I am? It's incredibly difficult for anyone with ED to ever imagine that because you must loathe yourself so much right now, which is why you keep changing yourself. But here's the thing. Do you genuinely hate yourself or do you hate your past, your life, the circumstances around you that are, that are creating this vessel, this, this feeling, whatever it is, this, who you are right now. So I started doing self-loving practices and it was affirmations. Um, every time I would eat, I would eat with gratitude. Um, I started connecting a lot of things, for instance, with me, with food was um, I've always been, like I said, very, very empathic and very sensitive. Um, and I realized that I was eating meat, dairy, eggs, and it just did not connect to who I was. So I became vegetarian and then eventually I became vegan. So I actually enjoyed my food a little bit more. And there was no guilt because guilt can actually put weight on. So when I stopped doing that, I stopped feeling already there's a lot of guilt with eating <laughs> to begin with. But once I made that connection, I wanted it to be as peaceful as peaceful, as loving, as kind as possible whenever I sat at the table. Um, I would take a moment to acknowledge that this food is here to nurture me, to give me vitamins, not to make me put on weight, it's not punishing me. And eventually the continuation of this practice helped me rewire my brain. Um, they obviously with anything, with any addiction, with any um, um, grained in habits, the old habit keep wants to pop in, come back, right? So there's going to be moments that I fell off the wagon. Um, if I put on too much weight, then of course I would go back to the old ways because it's easy. And once again, it took me a long time, but once I made the decision that this is just not in accordance with who I am, this is who I want to be, that version of me did not exist with that kind of mentality. Um, so eventually I got to a place where I, I work out, I still maintain myself very well, um, but I don't sit there and count calories. I don't watch what I eat as much. I eat healthy for the most part. And I ended up creating a body that I'm actually really happy with. Is it perfect? No. Um, and that is also part of the acceptance and the process is that it's understanding that it may or may not be perfect for some of you. I don't know. But it's much better to live this way. I live in peace. I'm happy. I can go out and enjoy my food. I, it doesn't affect my social life going out to dinner. Maybe being vegan a little bit, sometimes it does. But it really, truly transformed my life. And I really hope that you guys can start to implement practices to help you um, make better choices, make choices that are in alignment with the version of you that is healthy, not with the version of you that is the ED version. Because you got to remember there are many sub-personalities within you and the one that wins is the one that you feed the most, no pun intended. So if you constantly reassure the ED version of you, that is just going to get stronger and going to keep amplifying. But if you start taking time to focus towards the version of you that it lives in you, that is healthy, then more answers, more solutions, more ideas, more opportunities start showing up in your life. 
Now, before we go any further, I just wanted to point out that I have made a 21 day meditation challenge that is designed specifically to help you rewire your ED. So I do recommend that you download this because you can imagine if you can do this straight for 21 days meditating and really bringing your focus, your own attention to your subconscious mind, which is linked to your ED and try to reprogram that. It can really help you and give you some insights and give you some tools that can really transform you. And above everything else, this is not a solution, but this is definitely a um, an extra tool to help you on your healing journey. Now, if you don't want to, this is obviously charged. It's not a lot of money, but if you don't want to do that, then I also have a free uh, meditation for ED that is linked in the description box below. So please check that out and hopefully it really helps you. Yeah, you love meditating with mommy, don't you? Oh, you're such a good boy. Okay. Peanut's going to meditate with us. He always does. Okay. Get yourself comfortable though, boo-boo. All right, guys. So, if you hear the squeaking, by the way, it's my chair. <laughs> okay, so whenever you're ready, close your eyes. <sighs> Just take a minute to release any tension, maybe move your head, your shoulders. Just notice where in your body you may be holding on to some stress, tension. Maybe you might even have some injuries, whatever it may be. If you like, just shake it out, breathe it out, whatever you need to do to help you just relax a little more. Now, just remember, if you get uncomfortable at any point throughout this meditation, just feel free to get yourself in a comfortable position, okay? Don't feel like you have to stay in a stuck position if you're uncomfortable. And now bringing your focus to your breath. Really connecting to your breath, feeling your breath. And just allowing your breath to relax you just a little more. To deepen the concentration, the connection within. We are now going to call assistance from your guides, your angels, and your higher self today throughout this meditation to allow you to receive the energies, the frequencies, and the information that will assist you on your recovery, to help you heal, to help you understand yourself like you have never before, and to truly transform your heart, your mind, and your life. I'm visualizing a beautiful white and soft pink light shine above you, surrounding you, creating a sense of peace, of calmness, soothing your nervous system, creating an environment that, it, that brings up safety, releasing any negativity, any toxicity, Clearing the energy around you and in the space that you're in. And when you breathe in, I want you to breathe in this white and pink light, allowing it to enter into your heart. Soothing your heart, opening your heart, calming your heart. On the out breath, just allow any toxicity, any heaviness, any pain, suffering that you may be carrying at this time to be released gently and lovingly. So you can see it as a dark cloud gently leaving your body. And just allowing that energy, that loving, gentle, healing energy to move around your chest. In a way, it's like massaging your heart, releasing that tension, the walls that have been built up over the years, the fears, the insecurities, 
just bringing absolute self-acceptance and self-love at this moment. Expanding the energy of your heart, activating the truth in your heart, who you really are. And seeing for the first time, little you, the little girl, the little boy, that you were. Feel their energy, their purity, their essence in your heart. What it really felt like to be truly happy, to be free, to not care about all the chaos of life. To allow that innocence to be activated, that little you that still lives in your heart. They are still there. And if you could talk to them right now, what do they have to say to you? Do they have a message for you? What do they need from you to help you heal? To reconnect to that truth? that you receive, not think that it's crazy or that you're just making it up, but really just allow, play the game. And now we ask your addiction self to come forward, the version of you that is suffering. And do they have a message for you? Is this something that they want you to know? Do you want to ask them something? Now is the time, ask them. Don't be afraid. What do you need from me? How can I make you feel better? Why are you here? Why are you suffering? What happened to you? a moment to really go deep and not be afraid. And is there anything else you want to ask them or is there any more information that they have for you? And finally, invite the version of you that is healed, that is healthy, that loves themselves, that loves their body, that they're comfortable in their body. They know who they are. They know what they want. Free of the pain and the suffering and the torture. And allow them to show up. Just notice how different their energy is. What do they look like? See them smiling and glowing with vitality and energy. They embrace you. They love you unconditionally. They're so proud of you because they know that you can do this. And now it's time to ask them, do you have information for me? How do I get there? What do I need to do today? What do I need to change? What do I need to let go of? What changes do I have to start implementing in my daily life? What are my blocks? What are my fears? What are my insecurities? What are my doubts? What am I resisting? What is it going to take for me? And 
is there anything else that I need to know? Anything, any, any more information that you have for me? Please let me know now. And now just bringing your focus back to your heart. Absorbing the information that you have just received. Taking it all in. And trusting what you've received, trusting the wisdom that lives within you. And now ask yourself, who do I want to be? Who do I want to be? Do I want to be that version of me or the other version? There's no compromising. There's only commitment. And you know commitment. You have one life. One experience. Everything could be taken away at any moment. So really be true to yourself and be honest. Who do I want to be? And so become it. No matter what. Because you have the will, the strength, and the power within you. So use that power for the right thing. Stop using your power to go the other way. Be strong. Be brave. But above everything else, be powerful. And now suddenly above you, a beautiful gold light shines. This like warm, inviting, unconditional love just shining around you. And it's your guides, your angels and your higher self just letting you know that they're here for you. That they will give you signs, synchronicities, information, intuition gut feelings, whatever, to help you be on the right path, to guide you on the right path. But you must be willing to listen and follow. And just taking a moment right now to thank yourself for being here today, to commit to this healing, to commit to this new journey and to be powerful. It's time now to slowly come back. If you like, you can move your shoulders and your neck, gently returning back into your body slowly slowly expanding your awareness back take your time and when it feels right you can open your eyes i hope you got some powerful information and i really really hope that you understand that you really do have what it takes to heal It's not easy. I'm not going to sugarcoat it, but my God, it's worth it. I just want to point out as well that um, you can listen to the, to the to this meditation as many times as you like. I will put a timestamp as well because the more you practice it, the more information you will receive. So leave a comment below. Let me know how that meditation was for you, if it helped you. Like I mentioned, if you want me to do more videos like this. I always take requests, by the way, on my YouTube channel, and I always deliver. So <laughs> just so you know, leave a comment. All right, guys. Well, I really hope that today was helpful. I kind of just decided to start the camera and talk, and hopefully it made sense. I'll find out later once I edit. <laughs> you know how it is, peanut. Yeah. And that's it, guys. Have a beautiful day.
I love you. Bye. Ew. Oh, you kitty boo-boo. Mm. Oh, boo. Do you want to say hi to everyone? Do you want to look at the camera? Look at the camera. Yeah, look at that handsomeness. You are so handsome. You love it when I call you handsome, don't you? Thank you.